Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. I'd like to start today off with a rather complicated diagram that I've drawn here called a gear train. I want to imagine that we know what's happening down here with gear A. We know that it has some sort of um, angular velocity and we know it has some sort of power that it's providing to the system. And we want to find out the angular velocity of gear D as well as the torque that is acting on it. Today we'll look at gear terrains and identify the simple rules that guide their characteristics. Our starting place for this is first a, a perspective. The perspective is that gears transfer power. That is what they do. They take power from one gear and they transfer it somewhere else. That's their function. Let's remember some of the equations that we already know. First power is the torque times the angular velocity. And torque is in a vector formation, F cross R, where it, with the gears we're dealing with, they're really only in a, a flat plane. So we're going to say torque equals force times radius. And in the same way, the velocity, the tangential velocity, is omega r, or angular velocity times radius. Let's use these simple equations and the perspective that gears transfer power to understand a gear train. To understand what's happening between gear A and gear B, let's redraw them over here, okay? So we have gear B here and uh, gear A here. And because gears transfer power, we're always looking at these two, these two variables. So for gear A, we might have some angular velocity and some power that's going in. And then gear B, we might want to uh, find what is the angular velocity. And, you know, someday we're going to this, so why not, why not do it right away? We might want to find what the torque is at uh, gear B. To understand these gears, we look at what they have in common. These two gears are sharing teeth. Where they mate, they have teeth. Those teeth have a relationship. We want to know what they have in common. We know that the teeth travel together. So the velocity of the teeth at A at that point equals the velocity of the teeth at B. They're meshing. How can we use this information? We're going to be thinking a while, so uh, let's go ahead and draw a table that'll somewhat illustrate what's happening here. The first thing that we're really interested in is um, the speed relationship between A and B. We know that the velocity of A equals the velocity of B. And then we use this equation right here. We simply use plug this in to find a relationship between the angular velocity and the radius. So if we wanted to write that down, that's simply omega A RA equals omega B RB. The second thing that we want to understand is forces or torques. How hard is that gear working? We do the same thing we did for our velocities. We figure out what they have in common. We know that the teeth are touching and where the teeth touch, they're pushing against each other, which means we have the force of A, whatever tooth A is, equaling the force of whatever tooth B is. They're moving together, they're pushing each other. If we wanted to get an idea of torques or forces, we'd say that the force of A equals the force of B. Or if you wanted to use this equation right here, we'd see that the torque of A over the radius of A equals the torque of B over the radius of B. Let's erase this here. So we don't necessarily need to memorize, say, this equation or this equation. We simply need to remember what they have in common in speed and in torque. And in fact, this is true for any gear where teeth mesh. Let's move on to the relationship between gear B and gear C. So I'll draw gear B and let's say in green, 
I'll draw whatever gear C and we'll ask all the same questions. What the gear B and gear C have in common? Well, they share an axis. What are the characteristics of that axis? Um, and if you need to kind of get an illustration of what gear and B and C look like, you can see this, uh, this different view. We know that however gear B spins, gear C will spin in the exact same way. So we know that the angular velocity of B equals the angular velocity of C. And we go back to our equations. We know the velocity of B over the radius of B equals the velocity of C over radius of C. Once again, we don't have to memorize these equations. We just simply have to remember what do they have in common. Finally, in regards to forces and torques, we know that any torque that B acts on the system is going to be received by C. So we know the torques will be equal. Torque B equals torque C. We use our equations and we say that we see that the force of B times the radius of B equals the force of C times the radius of C. Lots of equations, but what it really comes down to is just remembering what do they share? What matters? In that case, it's the velocities being equal when the teeth are engaged. The force is being equal when the teeth are engaged. When the axis is rotating together, the angular speed is equal and the torques are equal. That said, take a moment and see if you can figure out the relationship between the angular velocity of C and the angular velocity of D. Hopefully you came up with a relationship that looks like this in red and green, where the green is C and the red is D. So that's really all we need to know about how gears relate to one another. They're either turning with the, the teeth are engaged or the axis is engaged. And by remembering what they have in common, either teeth or axes, we can figure out what all the equations are that we need. Let's give a little bit more texture on this relationship between omega and t, the angular velocity and the torque. We know that the, mo that the product of the two, angular velocity and torque, is power, and the gears transfer power. So in all these situations, if we keep the power constant between two gears, and we know the relationship between the angular velocity, we can find the torque. Or if we know the relationship between the torque, we can find the angular velocity. So while in our graph or in our chart, we've separated angular velocity and torque, they really have a very close relationship when we're looking at gears. So I should make a quick comment on signs when we're looking at this type of chart. Generally, we know how the gears are rotating, where the torques are acting, so there's no reason to keep too close an eye on that. However, we do need to remember that these, at their essence, are vector equations, they're cross products. In the rare event where signs do become an issue on your gears, make sure you're paying attention to the direction that the forces and the angular velocity are acting. I hope this gives you a basic feel of how gears work.